<laughs> All right. Um, Third time's a charm. We're and on. We're back. We uh, we're back, baby. Just had some internet issues. Seven o'clock in the morning on a Friday, early October. Um, it's seven twenty now because of eight internet issues. We've been going back and forth. Had to reboot my my router a couple of times. But um, all right, Stephen, what's going on in the world today? I think we're going to talk about Squid Games. Um, I'm actually kind of excited to talk about this. Not that I have particularly have any strong feelings about it, um, which. I have to say live official when we were first talking and starting for the podcast hack was like I don't have any strong opinions either but I'm sure I could pull a strong opinion out of my ass <laughs> which is uh in this day and age oh my god Damn it, dude. Oh, you're back, but I can't uh, hear you. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, this is rough. I wonder what it is. I it's so funny, like literally can't determine what this technical issue is. Like there's it's, no it's one hundred percent my internet. And I don't know yeah. why it's doing the thing where it's jumping back out out, out and in. Let's just I, I think it, it, it recorded through that. So um so let, let, let's let's see if it happens again. If it happens again, we can we have other options, but um, let's just try right. to tank this one. Yeah, right. we'll tank it. Let's see how fast we can do it. All right. I don't um, know what you said. Uh, you got cut off at at Hack said he was going to pull a strong opinion out of his ass. Oh, yeah. Let's, let's open um, a little question. I, I mean, I have a question for you about, sure. about Squid Game. Um, yeah. Why do you think Squid Game is so popular? I mean, um, do you think there's something there that resonates with with the world right now or do you think it's just a really good show you think i mean i'm sure there's multiple reasons but i guess i guess what why do you think squid game is so popular i mean it's literally the number one show on netflix it's it's uh it's a cultural like thing now it's like you you almost have to watch it i think it's yeah we um i think it's the number one of all time on the netflix catalog if I'm not mistaken, which is just surreal, right? And, and um, you know, it's funny because when you ask that question, I have a lot of answers, obviously. Like, I think there, you know, a lot of them are, are fairly obvious or easy to, to grab on why it's so popular. Like, um, but I think packaging it into like a co cohesive, like one-two punch on why is actually like, pretty interesting um maybe maybe i'll just start rattling off some of the reasons right and we can prune it as we go like it's extremely compelling um one because you know obviously the entire metaphor is like contrasting childhood games with like brutality and gore and you know if game of thrones proved anything like human like we love being audience to like social dynamics um and gore and sex like and competition right and survival like uh you know it's it's interesting that i think in dramas uh i think we forget how many characters we can actually hold you know how many relationships and major you know things that we can kind of like say oh my god that person just did that and if they pair with that person then oh my you know that kind of stuff i think is really intriguing to folks um and it's it's just drama if you think about it um so that's super compelling oh for i mean you can't not talk about this one i think that korean media has focused a lot on like the rotten heart of capitalism uh, you know, in a lot of their media and with the pandemic and with the way, like with that paradigm shift of what it means to, you know, to survive, to make a living, to be a part of society, to like have the common good and how to take care of everybody and what's fair. Fairness is something that 
uh, is talked about as, as a theme of the show, I think, and is a theme of everything we talk about in, in our society too, like what's fair and deserving. So yeah, I don't know. I'll stop there. Uh, you know, feel free to add, uh, edit, and what have you. I, I, I didn't straight out answer your question. Like, I don't know yet. Like, I think it has to come to me in the next, like, five minutes. Oh, man, I was hoping you'd solve it and we just end the pod right there. <laughs> um, all right, let me, let me throw my, my uh, strong opinion into the ingredients mixture before we, before we bake this thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, okay, so... I mean, one of the things is, is is it's a a really good show. I think you brought up a lot of those points where it's kind of like the Game of Thrones Hunger Games thing. It's like that kind of like battle royale thing, human survival. I think a lot of people um, can't help but watch that, especially when it's done well. And obviously doing it from the side of a Korean drama, drama is a very unique perspective um, that hasn't been done before as far as I know, or at least not mainstream. Uh, it's, but it's it's really hard to ignore or it's really hard not to notice the theme of fairness, the theme of capitalism and like the commentary around that. It's it's interesting because like when I was watching it and then after I mean, I, I, I killed the whole show in like two days. So like when I was watching it and after the fact, I was I was like I was like, holy shit, because uh, they 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 took out all of the. We should probably warn everyone that that there might be spoilers if they haven't seen squid game yet um i think that's probably fair right i'll probably put that into the title somewhere um but when well first of all koreans are crazy as fuck like i like i, I don't know <laughs> I, I don't know if i mean for, for for someone to come up with that and like you know and i guess like a lot of the the I don't have a lot of experience watching korean dramas or korean movies i've seen like old boy and and uh, and i've seen squid game uh, so, I mean, they're like, for me, they're like two for two. Um, but I mean, it's, it's, they took out all the stuff that made it unfair for any of the guests to participate in the game. So they literally made it so like, and it was very early on. It was like by episode two, they sent everyone back and they were like, Hey, you know, you don't have to participate in more than half the people want to want to bounce. You can bounce. And I want you to emphasize that point, though. Like, that's a point that I think a lot of people forget. Like, even the main character forgets at the end, right? Where it's like, hey, you could have walked away, but you came back. Right. So the option, the option to do it was presumably better than their current lives. Like, better than not doing it. Like, hey, you could leave, but you did leave. And when you left, it wasn't as good. And so you came back. And so, so that kind of it's an interesting um dynamic to the ethics question is this uh you know is like the 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 question like around like fairness and i think they i think the reason they did that was because they wanted um they wanted to force us to be like here's if they were holding guns like you know to these guys' head heads and they had no choice but to participate um and I guess after they signed, signed on the dotted line, that was the case, uh, then it would have been a different conversation. Clearly, that would have been entirely unfair. You wouldn't even be able to make an argument. But, you know, after the, after the first game, after uh, red light, green light, everyone went home. And then maybe that, it was unfair for the people that showed up the first time around. But, uh, but after the first game, everyone that came back knew exactly what they were getting themselves into. They knew they were playing another set of five games uh, where like half the people or up to half the people die every single time. And they're, they're in that uh, subset of people. So, so the question around fairness is, I mean, I mean, is it uh, clearly, I don't think it's fair to do something like that. Um, But, but they make you question that it's like, yo, if people want to participate in this game, then it, and they're not being forced to, then that's presumably a better option than not participating. So um, perhaps that's the commentary around capitalism. It's like you you have people so fucked up based on you know based on the way that money is set up and and um, and what you have to do to get by in society and how much money you need to make um, that once you get 
past a certain point, you can't come back from it. And you're just as good as, as, as being dead or having to play, you know, squid game <laughs> to, yeah. to get out of it. I, I don't know. That was a big ramble there. No, that was good. And, and, and this is exactly why I was excited to talk to you about it. Um, again, not because I came into it with any super strong opinions. Like I actually thought any, you know, essay you could have written on it would have been pretty fairly obvious, you know, like on the themes, the commentary, it was like not, it was a pretty like heavy handed show. I don't say that to knock it. I mean, it's, you know, it's part of its strength. It punches you in the face. But what is really interesting to me, and trust me, I, I this is something I do with everything that I, all media that I consume, like I go and just obsessively read all, as much an analysis, like analysis and commentary as I could find. But you know what's interesting? Is I had not thought or even encountered this thought until you, I heard you talking about it, Hack, which is in a way you could say that it's a commentary on the plight, the situation of Ali in the show, right? Who is a Pakistani illegal immigrant in South Korea. And, you know, there's a common narrative that people who are, who, who are not like, like signing up to play the capitalist game, um, it is consensual, right? It is like, it is like we're respecting the sovereignty of the individual to sign up and do this thing. And clearly this person is coming from a way worse situation immigrating from Pakistan or in, in the U.S. immigrating from Mexico or South America. Like, therefore, they are, they, they should be grateful. Like, they, like, there is no, like, we didn't ask them to sign up for that, like, you know, 20 hour a day, let us pick backbreaking, let us job, you know, and like, they, they did. Like, that's, that's, and in a way that kind of like absolves moral responsibility, um, you know, from from the uh the cap the laborers right capitalists I, I don't want to turn this into a whole economics thing um but you know like it, it's hard not to use those terms and yeah i mean we could uh, we could maybe pull that thread and talk a little bit about ali i think he was also a very compelling story like character story like you haven't actually seen someone like that in like mainstream media i think um Fucking Ali, man. <laughs> Episode God, six. God damn it. <laughs> God damn it, Ali. God damn it, Ali. God damn it, Ali. He's definitely a crowd favorite. He's one of my favorites. Um, I yeah, think, I'm gonna write. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna put heavy spoilers. Uh, yeah. In um, in the sh title because I don't think I'll be able to hide my reactions. Uh, well, but um, they they literally made the character Ali somebody that that the audience is like, oh my god, dude! I really hope this guy fucking does it. You know what I mean? Like, I really hope he he um, I I really hope like because this guy is he doesn't have a, a like a character flaw beyond the fact that he's like you know super trusting maybe or. I don't know what what's his character you know what I'm trying to say like like they didn't make him someone that was unlikable they made him someone that you know was a fair like you know like he he he's a good dude and and he's playing the game fairly he's trying to help other people out he he trusts people and he does everything he can to to make it so other people can win as well not just him but other people can win um and he's playing the game you know he's playing the game the, the squid game he's playing the game but but in playing the game he's not like i don't think there was one point where he tried to fuck anyone else over um and you know i guess the comparison is you know playing the game of capitalism you can play that many different ways you can play it in a manner where you're trying to fuck people over or you can play that in a manner where you're not trying to fuck people. He's not doing anything bad. So obviously you're watching it. And you're like, oh man, I really hope this guy fucking, 
you know, uh, makes it to the end. And I don't know, it, and it pulls on, it, it, it kind of, it kind of pulls on the, the strings. There's like, do you have to play the, if you play the game like Ali, can you win? I mean, should you, I mean, if we all know we're playing a game here, then, then should you overcome some of those like human emotions um, that make us like that connect us to other humans and understand, Hey, we're all here playing, playing a fucking game. So these are the rules of the game. You can do whatever the fuck you want. So yeah. Fucking Ali, man. Yeah. Yeah. Fight of Ali. I think my, if I could offer some critique, I thought Ali was like 90% written perfectly. That last 10% in episode 6 was just way too naive. Like, I would say, yeah, 100% character flaw. Um, and it almost, like, broke immersion for me. Like, I thought the show did an amazing job with immersion. Uh, but Ali being way too naive kind of knocked me out of it a bit. Obviously, the VIPs, they knocked me out of it for sure. But um, I think the interesting thing about Ali is this, if I could offer this up, is that it's not easy to write, like, a character as sympathetic as Ali. Um, you can't just write someone who's nice, right? He's also competent. Like he's also like a power player. Like you're like, oh, he's gonna he's he's good. He's not just um uh you know, he's not just like nice for the sake of being nice. He's not a pushover. You see that like even if it's a little haphazard, you know, he was not gonna let his boss screw him over. Um, with the money he's like yo dude i need my money right so it's not like you know he was completely like a nice pushover so i think competence is a big part of like naturally as an audience for us to respect you right whereas and, and i think there's a really interesting like triple foil if you will between uh the main character gihan sangwoo the smart dude and ali right three of them like if i could say it it, maybe frame it this way Ali was like idealistic if not naive um, but competent right and then uh, Sangwoo I think is honestly probably the best character in the show uh, and he's like realistic utilitarian pragmatic you know he still has a morality and you see him, and you see him grapple with it throughout he never like fully shifts one way or another you see him start to like He's like, you can see him thinking and, and, and like really grappling with every action he does like and weighing it, right? Um, and I think he makes the right call each time on what he should do. Um, and then the main character, Gihan, I think he's the worst and maybe that's a part of the commentary because, and I don't know if the, the, the audience, like you have to, you know, we have to go out and ask more people if they forgot what a piece of shit he was right like an absolute piece of shit and in the game though he starts to put on this like it, it's almost like he's self-delusional that he thinks he's a nice person like oh i gave some fish to a cat in the beginning and oh i just won a bunch of dollars so i gave like you know some money to the the cashier lady um it's almost like in his mind in mind he thinks he's noble and throughout the show you see him like take all these like noble stances for the sake of being noble where if you just like poked a little deeper you're like dude you're just like why are you why are you doing that that doesn't make any sense you're just doing it out of some weird sense of like you know wanting to make want you, wanting you to feel good and that carries all the way to the last episode i think like the very last episode he's still like honestly piece of shit um, but thinking that he's the hero, like he's thinking that he has to get a vengeance. He has to now overthrow this thing, even though he's like, you know, spent a year not get, like not giving money to anybody or saving and doing anything with his life. Like he, any, at the end, he just like, uh, uh, flakes on his daughter again. And it, and it, for no rhyme or reason, nothing like no plan, just like, oh, I'm just going to like, I have to do this and so i don't know the three of them are interesting in that way where there's like idealism and incompetence like all mixed around so yeah 
I think there's a lot of people like Gihan in the world right now, by the way. I'll throw that provocative yeah, statement out yeah, there. Yeah, Gihan is definitely a piece of shit. I mean, like, <laughs> less, probably less of a... I mean, he's... he's uh, <laughs> he doesn't get better. He doesn't... Where does he get... Where does he grow? I, I mean, at the end, when he's about to... Uh, when he was about to... Um, I guess we could just openly talk about it since this may have your spoilers anyways. But at the end, when he yeah. was, like, about to walk across and kill... Uh, um, Sang Wu and the girl stopped him, but I guess the girl had to stop him from to do that. Um, I mean, they they portray him as kind of like this because I remember O watched the first episode and and um and O was like, "Yo, actually, o, o watched half the first episode, and then uh and then we had to take a break because we were we were we we're doing something." And he was like, "Yo, how come the main character has no redeeming good qualities?" <laughs> and I was like. I was like, I don't know, man. You gotta keep watching. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's it's interesting. Like when the show has all these people that are such like, uh, there's no one where you're like, yo, I want to root for. I mean, I I I, I was honestly um, rooting for the main character the whole time. You know, obviously because they just played him as a, a protagonist, and I was like, man, I hope this dude like turns it around. But obviously, <laughs> obviously, he's probably at the at the end of the show. He's the same as as in the beginning because you know he he flakes on his daughter. Um, uh, I mean, I guess I'll give him a pass since he probably went through like a year's worth of like trauma, or I mean, he's I mean a lifetime's worth of trauma, and then it's only been a year since then. Um, Yeah, my argument to that is that at the end of the day, this is a show and it needs to be entertaining. So like, I don't buy that. Like, like it shouldn't be realistic. She should have grown. He should have changed at the end. You know. What about the the villain? You know how like the villains like yo, I'm, I'm giving you guys a chance. You don't have to be here. So like, if this is a a, a negative um, proposition for you, then just. You you don't come back, but when you come back, and uh, after knowing exactly what it is, then it's almost like you're signing on the dotted line. You're saying, "Hey, this is better for me than not." So it's like I'm making you a proposition. Like if you say no to it, is is a neutral or or not a net negative at all? You you just walk away after the after knowing what it is. Um, but I'm giving you a chance here, so it's. A positive or it should be a positive otherwise don't don't fucking do it um what do you think about the villain or uh, i'm gonna I, yeah, so i think the villain there's so much to say about him and it's like not very clear because i don't think he was written i think they they kind of ran out of writing for him um but i'll answer your question directly i think where i think I think the question that you put the like the dilemma you pose is best exemplified by the slapping game in the beginning right and I think what the show might be saying is that obvious like clearly hum there's more to this to, to what we care about like in our heart than just like the practicals right just money and just winning or losing whatever like there's like living there's like relationships there's happiness and sa joy uh, sadness and just despair you know and which is why you know as a, in a microcosm that first slapping game when he finally wins all he wants to do is slap the guy back he didn't he forgot about the money but money was the most important thing like this guy that the, the value the the utility of a dollar to this guy with where the amount of debt he was in you know he just signed his body away and like stolen all his mom's money and all this shit like was so high i mean you could argue that that's part of his psychosis he doesn't understand it but like even then he like he's a gambling addict right so he's addicted to money like the way people are addicted to heroin he he became addicted to like retribution like slapping this guy and i think that the game was kind of in the same way like i think the 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 main bad guy says that with a twinkle in his eye knowing that like he already knows that that's not like a fair thing you know he already knows that like i'm he's like i'm saying it to chat like to, for you to like, just like troll you basically um 
because obviously there's more than just you making a choice uh like you know yeah it's kind of weird it's like it's like you live uh i guess bringing it back to like uh capitalistic society um you could definitely like trick some dumb people to sign on the dotted line and <laughs> and and you know they don't know what they're saying i'm not trying to give a free pass to the to the villain because clearly this guy has more money than he knows what to do with and rather than just openly helping people with the i'm sure mountains of money that he has he's like hey let's make a game show where people are forced uh you know to go against their human nature of connecting with people and 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 make them make <laughs> i don't know like you, you know what i'm trying to say like rather than hey look i have a lot of money all these people are are in need let's try to find a way to like you know help them in a sustainable manner instead let's play a game show and they fucking kill each other and then the last person standing gets to keep all the money and, and for the entertainment of other people that have a lot of money um it's kind of fucked up but yeah 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 and 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 going back to that last episode and i think this is where i felt like there wasn't enough of a satisfying catharsis at the end um whether he like more directly explained what he was doing or not and i I felt like instead of doing that he tried to use the the example of the the homeless dude out in the snow to like explain his whole why he did this because he didn't explain it at all he just said i just wanted to i was just bored and i wanted i wanted to relive my childhood um and then he like turned over and started talking about the hobo but the hobo example also seemed very surface though it wasn't a very profound example it's like okay like you know humans are inherently apathetic and we you know we don't have enough energy like fucks to give all around like um but then he gets proven wrong because at the very end like you know someone comes with a cop but like was his whole point to do all of this just to prove how rotten people are like and then he gets then he's proven wrong because the protagonist is still idealistic and the hobo got saved so are we to, are we to say that like you know the thesis got disproven i don't know right i don't know i think the overarching theme around um around the villain and i guess the people in the show it's it's kind of like you you like that dude has so much money that life is boring so he has to do shit to like you know what i mean like he has so much money that life isn't fun anymore for him uh and then the everyone else in the show has so little money that they they'd rather play in this like you know like death lottery game show or whatever um you know just for a small chance at uh at getting back to even so that they can have a life that's that's worth living um but like too much money or too little money and not focused on like the things that matter i mean Gion literally like uh, i mean he, he came back from his mom fucking died <laughs> like while he was gone you know what i mean and, and the whole time like you know he, he's i don't know man it's they it's such a fun show to talk about because no everyone's a, a fucking piece of shit there's, <laughs> there's no one in that show except for like maybe Dion's mom like his main character's mom and then Sangu's mom uh we're, you're wrong though actually the girl yeah the girl the yeah third place saying, she's probably the only one right right she I just wanted so. to yeah she actually was the only one I think which didn't really occur to me until now because i was i was like you i was thinking everyone was a piece of shit and then i was like wait a minute they killed off all the non-piece of shit people like ali and shit <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> and um and the girl that um that sacrificed her life so the other girl can live i yeah. mean that was like a um that's noble yeah that was a noble i mean she was like kind of like a side character but you know that was also a noble uh a noble there's not a lot of noble moves 
in that in that game. Damn. Yeah, what a crazy show. Yeah, and then uh, I, I wish they expanded on this a little bit more too. But um, the workers too, or the the pink soldiers, right? Are compl- like they're complicit, and they're like, for some reason, they know exactly what they need to do. But you see, that's a, a need to know basis. But they they like execute, you know, their area of responsibility perfectly in this crazy, you know game as well and then there's the side storyline of the i wish they did more of that too the side storyline of the body harvesting because at first you're like is the body harvesting a part like of the entire structure and then you're like oh wait no it's just a couple dudes like trying to make a side hustle um yeah Yeah, i thought the i thought the body harvesting was i thought it was more than just like a money thing but then like when the curtain gets pulled back it's just like it doesn't even matter that they're harvesting the bodies. Like they could just be dumping the bodies in the ocean or some shit. Uh, and it would have been the same. Um, yeah. Yeah. It didn't matter. Really. Yeah. The pink, the pink soldiers were interesting because it, it's like they were complicit in this. Right. But like almost in the same way that, well, I need to think about it a little more, but almost in the same way that the people participating in the game, like once they signed on the dotted line, they, I mean, before they signed on the dotted line, they could have left whenever, um, you know, and, and and even after they signed on the dotted line and then they they had to, um, after they signed on the dotted line, they had to play within the system in order to leave. But uh, because they came back ap- after ep- episode two, it's an assumption that everyone wanted to come back even knowing what it was. Um, with the soldiers, it at first it seemed like, to me, it seemed like, damn these soldiers are all like you know bad as well and obviously they probably were but then like halfway through watching it i was like i was like huh are these, these soldiers don't seem like they're in a position to be able to do anything about it because obviously they'll probably just get killed if if either they take off their mask or if they try to like you know do something so so i wonder if they're in a position where like you know after they get to a certain point you just have to like go with it or or like you're it's almost like you're in the game in the system but on the other side of it as well it's like you're playing the capitalistic game but you're on the other side you're like you know part of the game as well um just two sides of the same coin perhaps yeah 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 um yeah i think i think that could have been a really interesting subplot um i think the the only teaser we kind of had about it was like when uh his neighbor the other guy is like hey you saved me that one time so that's why I'm letting you go now. It's like, whoa, the heck, they have like whole like relationships behind this. So, yeah. What do you think about um, when they turned off the lights because the glass maker started being able to like tell the difference, right? That was a crazy fucking game. It was, it was just, it was. <laughs> god damn imagine going first in that game um that dude. game is both interesting because it was more confined than the other games like the outcome was way more like the probabilities were way more obvious from the outset um it's hardly fair like it was probably the least fair one <laughs> yeah i mean the games were all fair in the sense that like you know going into the game you have the same probability of 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 picking like you know, one player one or player 16 going first or going last. It's like nobody knew the game. So it was like, we can all equally end up going first or last. But the game in itself is highly unfair once you. you yeah, know, you're number one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's an entirely like luck based uh, system without knowing the actual the actual game. Um. Yeah, man. I mean, it. It's kind of bullshit, right? It, it, it's like, yo, if you figure out a way to, to beat the game, then they have to change the game. Uh, you know, to keep to keep entertaining. <laughs> uh, I mean, imagine if the first guy figured that shit out. Yeah. Everyone runs across. So you know, you know, it's interesting. It, you know, just to pop back out and up for a little bit here. 
um, you know, we've talked a lot about uh, the misinformation that's happening. Like we're in like a post-truth, post-fact world. You know, the Facebook scandal dropped this week. Um, I wonder if, going back to your original question, why it was so popular. I wonder if like this actually like either just fell into or or amplified kind of this like conspiratorial thinking that is out there already and like you know class-based stuff where you know the you know the illuminati the elites the whatever or i mean i don't disagree with that like you know power is entrenched and it's way fucked up but that's probably a part of it you know like people are saying, no, I don't want to go back to work for minimum wage. Like, no, fuck the, you know, fuck the employers. Like, you know, Joe Biden's drinking blood, like, you know, eating babies. <laughs> like, I wonder if people that. were just like, <laughs> no, I mean, I wonder if people were, yeah, people were like looking at like Squid Game. They're just like, duh, yeah, duh. And they're like more amplified in their thinking. I do think it's interesting, like, you know, when you have Squid Game and, and, and I, I do think there's a parallel where this is like kind of like a microcosm of an extreme microcosm of 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 a capitalistic society. And I know I don't I, I don't know a lot about this, but I think um, people were talking about how in Korea, like uh, there's a lot of like downward mo- mobility for like the middle class, like the, the rich poor is, is getting like wider or whatever. And and so perhaps. Um, I'm not. I'm. I, I know nothing about Korean, you know, society or any any cap, Korean capitalism or any of that stuff. But I think somebody mentioned that, so I guess I'm just gonna bring it up. Um, uh, but yeah, man. I man, there, there there are like so many. There there's like so there's like so much around like why why this show could be popular that it's hard to put your finger on. I mean, it could simply just be, a, you know, people like violence and, and Hunger Games, Battle Royale type shit. And I think there's an element of that, but I think perhaps there's like a deeper thing that resonates with people. Like, okay, this is this this will be a, uh, I have an interesting question or a question I think is interesting, of course, but um, do you think somebody, if, you, do you think people could, in today's society, they could they could pull this off where people will sign up for this game and play this shit. That's a great question. <laughs> cause because I was thinking like <laughs> ran, random thoughts in my head, okay. Um you remember like way back in the day when there was this thing called bum fights? Yeah. Yeah. And then like eventually the dude got invited onto Dr. Phil or something like that, and he, he went on to Dr. Phil and he was dressed as dr dressed as dr phil yeah and it, was, it was just like i don't know it was, we were in college so i'm sure i was probably not mature enough to like understand the the nuances around that but i was kind of like huh this is interesting this guy has this thing called bum fights and for people that d- didn't know like they would go into the streets and then find two homeless people and give them like you know 20 bucks and a bottle of whiskey and be like hey uh if you fight this other bum then then you know we'll give you money and we'll give you like liquor or whatever and then they'll go find another homeless person and 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 make the same offer and clearly these guys don't have to participate uh but they were able to create a series of videos and people like watched it i think this guy made a ton of money doing this and and it wasn't just one video it was like they made one video but then it was you know like a whole series I don't know how many they made. I never, I never watched it beyond like the stuff that like made it to like the mainstream. Uh, I've, I've maybe like seen like clips of like one video, you know, whatever advertise, advertisements they put out there. And this was back like before cell phones. So, you know, they roll out there with a camcorder and I think you had to buy that shit on like late night TV for like 1995 and they send you like the, the tape or the DVD or whatever it was. Um, but that's kind of like a small thing that happened that i mean i know it's not squid game where it's like that like big of a thing but um but i don't know there's like some parallels there to me there's like hey you don't have to play in this game 
but by choosing to play in this game you're implying that your life is so shitty that it's better to play in this game than not and i'm making you this offer 20 bucks in a bottle of whiskey <laughs> um if you go fight this dude and 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 he doesn't have to play in it either so he's voluntarily participating as well so a hundred percent people would do this a hundred percent wait like, the squid I, the squid game thing or the bum fights thing i would say a hundred percent squid games thing so you, you think we can get like yeah it wouldn't even have to be 400 people it'd probably like a few dozen people and you're like yeah man just yeah uh red light green light i mean from what i understand about addictions right like it drives people to do some really fucking crazy shit like you know meth heroin addictions even gambling addictions um yeah i mean people i think people are doing that even now in small small games like small unofficial games in order to get to win something they're you know they'll they're giving up a big part of their humanity to do so and yeah, I think you the the system necessarily creates a, a a class of people that are squeezed to the bottom as like you know ultra despair. Um, you know, I mean, I walk that one back up a little bit and say that. I mean, think about like the funnel system we have for professional sports in the U.S. too, like football. All right, like for a lot of people in that those situations that's the only for their children it's like the only way to 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 get upward mobility and it's a lottery it's a i mean it it is such it is such a small lottery and the path is just paved with like bodies man you know like you football is not something that you know you can be division one like right amazing or a, a high school recruit and just like get a really bad injury all your eggs are in that basket, you know what I mean? You it, and it ends there. Like your whole story, it's like it's like single elimination. You died in game three, right? Like type of thing. Like you could have been the LeBron, like LeBron James. You could be LeBron James level potential. You know, arguably LeBron James also has resilience in his DNA or something, right? But like I don't know. So I think that it's there, um, and I think that yeah. People, I think a lot of, yeah, drug addicts and what have you are, are doing that already. Um, here's another real life analog that I was thinking about too. I was, um, so there was, there was these, sh in my grocery store here, there's shrimp that's on sale and it's all, it's like really on sale and it's really good shrimp. And like, and I was like wondering why. And then I ended up looking into the ethics of like seafood and, and how to like figure out what's responsibly sourced and. And I don't know if this is actually part of the Seaspiracy documentary. It might have been, but they talk about how in like a lot of parts of the world, I think this one story focused on Thailand, they uh, they would conscript like people off the, you know, who were destitute and needed money and say like, hey, you want to go on this, you want to go on a fishing boat? We'll, you know, we'll pay for your, your housing, your food. You, you just got to do some shrimp stuff. And everyone's like, oh, that sounds like an amazing deal. It's like, okay, cool. Meet me on the dock. Right? And then they take them out there. And it's like, now that you're far away from civilization and law and you were just in the middle of the ocean, the captain's like, all right, like, you know, let's squid get to games. work. It's squid games. It's really, no, the way they describe it is just like squid games. It's like all the people on that boat now are just like, holy crap. And now... Now, where th that example falls through is that those people are probably those that first group of people that came in and died. Like, I think those people were screwed. Like, they did not know exactly what they're going through. So, um, so I don't know if there's people who like still know that the situation is bad and still decide to take their chances on a shrimp boat. But the industry, I mean, at this point, the industry, the fishing industry has been around. Like, commercial fishing industry is massive, and it's been around so i you know unless you're just like turning through new people or and like people aren't telling other people to like hey don't go on that boat they're gonna squid game you like i don't know they're like, they're like out there <laughs> catching squids and shit 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally Squid Game. Literally Squid. Yeah. No, that's crazy. Right. Man. It... Yeah. Go ahead. Oh no, no, no. I'm just kidding. It's it's funny because like I, I hadn't even thought like that question was such a good question because I I didn't even I knew about the 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 shrimp fishing boat situation and the abuse that happens there and they're literally trapped in a squid game you know like the some of the stories are bad yeah <laughs> shrimp game squid game um, um yeah I, I do think professional sports on some level is like the modern day uh gladiator um thing you know like you, the stadiums is like a big ass coliseum there's people out there cheering for for their side and stuff and obviously with professional like especially like football everyone knows now like how dangerous football is for your brain, like the long-term damage is like, you know, getting concussion. And, and you know, uh, I think a lot of football players, not like a lot as in a majority, but a significant number of, of football players where it's like a, it's at least a standard deviation or two above the mean, uh, you know, commit suicide or have issues like after they stop playing. And they think it's because, you know, they keep hitting their heads and it causes, um, was it CTE or whatever it's called? yeah mm -hmm. um but yeah um but the thing is a lot of people even knowing that would still play football for the fortune that you get from that you may you know making millions uh playing playing a a kid's game uh i guess in a way a kid's game which is interesting because it's like a squid game thing but um so i have a, i have another interesting question um Okay, so we're talking about a lot of people that are like super desperate, like, hey, like you have no other choice but to play this game. Otherwise, you are stuck in this lower rung of of society forever. You, your family, the people you care of, the, the people that you want to take care of, you can't take care of them because you are at the bottom of the bottom. In fact, you know, in Squid Game, these people were not just at the bottom in terms of how much money they had, they were even below that since they were like, you know, a lot of these guys were like negative millions and billions of dollars and stuff. Um, so not only can you not take care of people, uh, people are going to come after you and fuck you up because you owe them <laughs> money too. So, so, they, so they were like entirely desperate. In the squid game, it, it like they took, obviously took advantage of, of that fact. And then they made a game where it was like, every round half the people died off or, or some amount that was like you had a real chance of getting fucked up by playing that game round like you, you basically had no fucking chance like let's say half the people died, died off every game two to the sixth power i mean you kind of know what your chances are i mean there was only one dude standing at the end um if they had a game where it was like a reverse lottery and it was like say a thousand people play everyone that makes it out gets like a million bucks or something like that but then only like i don't know what are the chances that you die from covid like one percent or less or something like that depending on your circumstances let's say it was like this you you just give you a million dollars to play in hacks covid game you just get in <laughs> you know you just get covid it's probably not a funny fucking joke since i'm sure a lot of people <laughs> Uh, or, or like uh, some 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 situation where you have a very small percent chance of dying, but I'll give you a million bucks to play. Um, where would that line have to be drawn for you to be like, huh, maybe um, I would play that game. And and what percentage and for what amount of money is there a let's say you have a one percent chance of death and someone was like, I'll give you a billion dollars to play, though. Would you do it? Would you not do? It? I mean, I know a lot of people would fucking do it because it's a billion dollars, right? Um, I guess my question is, and I don't expect you to answer this, is where would that where would that, that line intersect for you? Let's assume the money is, uh, I don't know, what's the life changing amount? Ten million dollars. Yeah. And would would you ever even play the game, or would you would you just be like, nah, I don't play fucking games like that? um like, i'll give you 10 mil and then what percentage would that would it be like one in a thousand one in ten thousand at a certain point you'd have to play right it was like one in a hundred thousand like i mean people go skydiving yeah. for they pay to go skydiving and that's probably like less than one in a million for death yeah yeah for sure um i mean obviously it's a sliding scale uh for each person i think i mean all the research says that like humans are extremely risk averse right um 
I don't know what that percentage is. I want to say like whatever I say, it's whatever I say, I would probably readjust it to like 10 or 15 percent more risk accepting to account for that. Mm -hmm. Um, Let's see. So if so, one percent, right? 100 people walk in, one 99 people walk out. I think, right. yeah, I mean, I would take, and how much money would I do for like, let's just say 1%, right? COVID. Gosh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know off the top of my head. It's a great question. It's tough, I think right? It's a, yeah. What, what about, what about if it was like a, a bidding system and people were like, yo, you got to put, I don't know, for $10 million, you got to tell us what percentage you'd be willing to do. And then the top 100 people out of like a thousand people will get to play in this game. Like, what do you think that will end up for, for people? Not yourself, but like, uh, and I guess okay. it would do, it will probably depend on the socioeconomic, like status yeah. of the people. Um, I don't know. Yeah. It's just, it's just a, a funny question just cause it's like, it's like, Hey man, like what situation would you sign up for a game like this? If, I mean, obviously, I, I don't think anyone will sign up for a game where you're like 99% like to die. Um, but like in a situation where you're like 99% to live and the pot was high enough, then because I, I feel like some people do dumb shit all the damn time. Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, we're just talking about gambling. And so I think that you could just extrapolate off of, uh, you know, the casino and actual lotteries right so i think you can just forget about actual lotteries because the the chance is infinitesimal like it's you know what i mean it's so low you'd always take the lot you'd always take that and then you know casino game chances more than i do um but those are somewhat i mean the house edge is like you know i mean that that probably maps well to risk that people will take um, to potentially win than law of averages. But I mean, you don't get law of averages because you get one play, right? So most people, most people <laughs> don't understand those. Pro- a lot of people that go to the casinos actually do not understand those probabilities very well at all. Um, and I didn't even factor that into the equation. I feel like yeah. a lot of people will probably, <laughs> yeah, I'll, 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 I'll play some blackjack for uh you know um yeah bro it's it would be worse it would be people don't understand those those percentages so a lot more people i think would sign up to i wonder what the chances of of of, uh dying from from uh skydiving is um one list of one in two hundred twenty thousand. um is the mortality mm. rate from uh well look at the chances of driving dying while you drive like what's that one um hang on it's giving me uh chances of dying from a motor vehicle crash but um that doesn't tell you chance of drive of driving death um on the way to work I think it's like a per mile calculation, maybe. Yeah, maybe it's per mile or, or flying. Yeah. Flying is pretty low. But I mean driving is one that we like don't even think about. That's like um disproportionately high to expectation. But yeah, I mean any one in that I mean I like the I actually like the ratio, excuse me, of skydiving, the one in two hundred twenty thousand. That's a pretty acceptable like take. Yo, I'd pay to go skydiving. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, like, I pay I'm to get hit in the head. <laughs> yeah. Um, pay to go. Skydiving. Oh yeah, I mean, anytime you go into the ring, I mean, it's not a it's not a zero percent chance that you don't come out with you know some permanent damage or like even death. Um, I imagine that's and you know obviously like even playing like intramural sports and shit, you can get fucked up doing that too. Uh, and obviously we we're talking about football earlier 
It says uh, 1.41 deaths per 10,000 vehicles in 2019. So, I mean, I mean, we're already assuming these, uh, some of these risks just by like living, I guess. I don't know what my number would be. I just, I, I just thought it was, it'd be a fun question to ask just because I don't know if fun's the right word, but at least an interesting question to ask just the nature of the squid game. Yeah. No, there's there's a lot of fun thought experiments about maybe we should devote an episode to thought exper like ethical thought experiments or, or things like that. Like game theory thought experiments. They're really fun. Uh you know there's the one tough. to those where, always like, hurt my fucking head, bro. They're I'm so down tough. To do I'm down, but like, they always hurt my head because I'm like, oh, what the yeah. fuck would I do? Like like the one about like whether or not you um you know the one where you're like the conductor of a train thing oh the tr and yeah the trolley there's problem like a, there's like a yeah. track that's gonna kill like one person uh yeah. and then and then if you if you move it then it kills like five people or you know something like that or five people that aren't supposed to be playing on the tracks or one person that's like you know in a spot where they're supposed to be like do yeah. you do you fuck up the one person and if you do <laughs> then how many people does it have to be before you're like hey like maybe I'll just let these people die. Like was it was it two? I didn't explain that question right at all. Um, but it forces you to put a measure on human life, which is a completely different topic that I'm definitely not um, haven't thought of enough to give an opinion. But I guess with the nature of this show, that probably doesn't matter too much because I'll just give, <laughs> give the opinion off the top of my head. Because if you yeah. were a Tesla engineer and you had to and you have to decide hmm then you then you have to like you know like if, way to bring if, that back yeah if, if like if you're a tesla engineer and and you're doing self-driving like cars or whatever um and you have to decide hey like this car is about to hit like a woman and a child but then like the car the nature of the car is like because of the um w with human nature if i'm driving like i'll naturally like you know do whatever to like you know, at that point, I'm not even thinking anymore. Let's say a woman and child are crossing the street, like the, a human will just do whatever. And I think, actually, I don't know. I don't know what a human, you think a human would protect themselves in that situation or probably just try to avoid the woman and child without thinking about it. But the car can actually make a reaction there. But what mm -hmm. if the reaction was, yo, you swerve out of the way of the woman and child, but you go into oncoming traffic and you know, like the percentage of death you know, for the driver is like 95% in that case, or you, or the car picks to go off a bridge or, you know, or like whatever, or hundred percent kill like a woman and child. Then the Tesla engineer probably has to, um, make some decisions there. That's yeah. a tough one, man. Yeah. How would you even do that? I guess it'd be bad for marketing if there were, if it wasn't marketed as the autopilot will always protect the driver. Yeah. Yeah. But then Tesla's obviously going to get sued if you, uh, man, that would, that'd be interesting. The first time a, has there been a pedestrian death from self-driving cars? I mean, I know there's been like driver deaths and uh, it seems like at least the way that the articles are written, written or like the coverage is usually the drivers like doing something that they're not supposed to be doing. And I know right now self-driving cars isn't like a thing like Tesla's kind of like, hey, we have this thing that works really fucking well, but you're never supposed to take your eye off the road. OK, yeah. like you're never supposed to like. Um, you're never supposed to like not be like in control of the vehicle yourself in case something's going on yeah but when they remove that that blanket of um when they remove that like i mean eventually it's not going to be advertised as that it's going to be like oh yeah you could go to sleep if you wanted to right i mean that's the way it's moving yeah but then whose yeah. fault is it that is i don't I don't think we have an answer to that one, honestly. Um, I think that professional ethicists, uh, academic ethicists and philosophers are 
probably battling over like thought experiments like that. And I don't I don't think there's an answer. I wonder if you society know. can ever just accept it as a net positive for society and have the laws be reflective of, of that too. Because like, okay, let's say they made it so that Tesla can get sued out of the ass if anyone ever dies from, from you know, self-driving cars. Um, but let's say that, I mean, we probably know for a fact, like for instance, my mom should not be fucking driving. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, and there's probably plenty of people like my mom that are driving. And so, and honestly, like obviously a self-driving car would probably drive better than myself because I'm like driving with my knees and like eating at the same time and texting and stuff. <laughs> uh, but, but like, so it would be, and you know, a lot of people like probably drive sleepy or drive drunk or whatever. So let's say a net positive of all self-driving cars would be that collectively there's like less overall like traffic deaths or, you know, just overall like computers make less errors in humans. Uh, I'd assume I, I'd assume the the death rate would approach zero, or as close as that we're gonna get to zero. Um, humans are never gonna get there. I mean, you know, if we all drove like forty miles per hour, the death rate would all almost be zero too. No, that's not true. Um, right? You know, they, they tried like that. that. No, they tried that shit. Yeah. Dude. In yeah. uh, so I I did the um, so I took an engineering uh writing class in, in college and a lot mm -hmm. of it was around the social implications of of technology, technology that you don't that you don't consider and uh i did a report on this um and in like the the 60s or 70s right they uh there was a lot more motorist deaths and uh throughout the country you know just people driving and obviously cars weren't as safe back then or whatever so what they did was they they made it federally like a law that you could only drive like I think it was 55 miles an hour or 50 miles an hour. That was like the fastest you could. They literally just like yo, too many deaths. We're gonna make it 55 miles an hour. That's the cap. You can't go go over. And uh, after a few years of doing that, they realized that the death rate actually went up um, when they made the law 55 miles an hour. And the reason is because like if you think about it, a lot of times you're driving like on the highway and stuff like that. Imagine if all the cars are forced to go 55 miles an hour when there's actually a lot more space to drive. Like everything gets like compressed and then so you know when things get compressed that's like when accidents are more likely to happen um so then they they got rid of the that law and obviously it went back to normal but um but there's only there's only so much humans can do you know like even if you're going 55 miles an hour but your ass is like drunk or whatever <laughs> or, yeah. or if you're if you're uh if you're um but did they so i i that's a really great point i didn't i never thought about that but did they prove it though for like like 35 40 um, because i guess i guess if you, if there's you, the if physics you, of a collision right like there's right, like right yeah yeah i mean but i guess you could say well you get 25 miles an hour and and you know approaches like zero but then it, it removes the might as well be riding like a fucking bike <laughs> but 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 you know Yo, 25 like, miles per hour on a bike is fast as hell no like, exactly i mean but you're like I, holy moly this is so fast but it's probably going to be slower than that. And, and, and also you have to consider the fact that if, if you're going 25 miles an hour and I'm going 75 miles an hour, you're on the road for three times as long. You know what I mean? So Yeah, well, maybe humanity needs to slow down a little bit. Like we still get where we're getting. It's just we just do it a little bit slower. Yeah, but if it takes three times as long, then maybe <laughs> I'm more likely to get in the Gotta go but, fast. But, but, yeah. but I mean, but let's just assume that, that self-driving cars will, will outperform humans. <laughs> Because that's probably the case. I mean, I think currently right now, the self-driving car in its current state is still safer than the average human. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I think to answer your question, um, I think the, really technology is is what makes it interesting and, and hard to answer because I, I look back at all the moments where humans, like, I don't know, to what degree is voluntary at each event, but like, you know, signed away their rights for lack of a better term, right? For the collective good. Um, we've done that, like the entire premise of society in, go in government is basically signing away your individual rights, right? For the, the good of everybody. And But technology changes it, right? It's different to have a social security number that sits in some like, like folio somewhere versus 
facial recognition CCTV uh, that like spots like a split second of me walking around a corner in Minnesota when I really should be here in Virginia, right? Um, and I don't know. I think so. Privacy. I, when I think about privacy, that's a really interesting one because especially post nine eleven with the Patriot Act, like everyone basically said. Yeah, go go look at it. Like, go look at everything. Like, I got nothing to hide. It's gonna be better. We're gonna like figure out the terrorists early. Like, you know, like screen everything. Like, and at that, it, it literally, it was like a ridiculous amount of approval at that point. Uh, and then we walked it back. It's like, holy crap, maybe we don't want the government all of like we don't want that much power to be centralized in the hands of like some few people who God knows, like the Tesla engineer, right? And I don't know, man. I, I I don't. Technology changes it, for sure. But I will say, with privacy, it's like not looking good. Um, like we probably it hasn't, it hasn't looked good in the longest time, dude. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, but then again, privacy is like an abstract thing, whereas like as an as a an American capital a american is like i want to choose where i drive and where i drive and like no one's gonna tell like physically make my body go where i don't want my body to go like my body is my like sovereignty you know so i definitely think that's a divide like for some reason there's certain things that are just going to be irrationally more like no off off limits to people um like self-driving cars yeah i don't know it depends yeah i mean i think i think we're coming around self-driving cars you can pack enough luxury stuff in it and make it a status symbol to have a self-driving car versus having to drive yourself you know um i mean the cynical part of me is always like yeah how do we how do we package something to be more like luxurious luxurious and aspiring as a consumer good you know Yeah, we so, could go down the rabbit hole of, of 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 customer data and and all that <laughs> and privacy and all that shit, uh, but that's a completely different. Um, that's a completely different ball game. Yeah, but I, so I think I think it's a great theme that started off with Squid Games. Though it's just like, what would you sign away? Like you know, what's the value of you of you? of the of, of you and like how would you parcel that out right how like interesting people, would... go ahead sorry you remember we had that one friend who like dr drank a carton of egg whites <laughs> <laughs> oh, for, like a... for like for like uh, uh, for some money yeah it was like it was like a hundred bucks <laughs> yeah you could probably squid game some college kids that are broke uh, yeah and it's funny because like when we talk about ego identity and you right like when you're a college kid your reputation doesn't i mean doesn't really mean anything or like your identity is just like like you know not anything cohesive or meaningful in the same sense that it is just once you start to get older people do dumb shit for free <laughs> yeah yeah well, in some cases you don't have to pay them <laughs> It's uh, you remember the uh, crate challenge? Yeah, like right uh, a month, because a month ago, <laughs> the, the people want challenge. prestige and grading. But that's that was crazy, man. We should have done a pot on that. Yo, there's probably, there's probably like a non-zero. I bet you <laughs> some people die from that shit. Probably, dude, you can fall on your head and and seriously hurt yourself doing that. Seriously, and seriously. some of them, some some people were doing that on top of like um concrete so like, okay. yeah some people were doing on con i guess with concrete is it's probably more stable more stable but it's definitely not a soft landing dude. <laughs> you know like like you could you could you could get fucked i bet you some people got like fucked up doing that shit mm -hmm. and also like the vector of falling is straight down like you're not moving forward and getting the tumble like you're just like right. it's like a side it's like a sideways <laughs> like and you you have no control over like the the crates literally just fall out yeah oh my god yeah yeah people 100 percent play squid game man you could definitely 
<laughs> you can definitely score against me. What what are the Squid Games would be a great challenge? Yeah, it probably would be a great uh, great challenge. All Dude, good. all right, we need to edit the opening scene of Squid Game, play some mon- uh, play some of the music, and then cut to uh, cut to the great challenge. Oh my god, dude! Yeah, people. Yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, people do a lot of dumb shit for free. I forgot about that. Yeah, you're trying to monetize this YouTube in a separate way. Like, we need to edit together that video, uh, put an ad on it. Oh my god, uh, man. gosh, yeah, man, people. <laughs> we have way too much. There was way too much optimism uh, at the start of this podcast compared yeah, to. Yeah, I was. I was like, a, I was like a thousand and one. You take a million dollars, bro. Oh my god. People will take much less for a thousand and one, dude. I want to screen cap your face or our faces. It's like it's that moment when you realize people, <laughs> like, like how little people would actually do these things for. Yeah. Oh I, man. I, so like when, when we talk, a lot of times I'm taking notes. Uh, just so I don't forget stuff that I say or stuff that we said that I thought was important. I just wrote yeah. people do dumb shit for free. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, man. Squid Games is a no. Like, like that's why these things are banned because, like, people who make the laws knew that, like, it would just get out of hand. Like, there would be too much demand. <laughs> oh man, it's just fucked up, dude. Yeah, maybe we fucked up. <laughs> What's that? Like, like, what if we, yeah, what if we came up with a metaphorical squid game and we just started kind of like, exp- like, putting it out there with our fr- with our social network? It's like, hey, yo, uh, <laughs> we'll give you a thousand dollars. Oh my this, god, this great challenge. I'm actually curious who would sign up if you just drop that in the middle of your, uh, in the middle of your your IG. Anybody who follows me can sign up. Just uh, we have like a landing page. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder who would sign up for that shit. It would be interesting. Like, what if you had to design a one thousand dollar game, right? Just a, a solo standing one thousand dollar game. We don't have to o- overthink about like. It's just what would you wrap around a thousand dollars in current America? You know. I think you have to make it so that people wait. I mean, what's the the penalty for not completing the game? Is like, is it like crate challenge where you like fall on your head or you lose a finger? <laughs> you lose a finger. You lose your pinky. I think you'd have to make it like highly probable that they can make it through. But like, yeah. but like, you know, enough people like wh- where's that bell curve where m- the most people will participate, but like enough people don't make it through. That is kind of like, man, you do that for 5%. That's crazy, bro. 5%. 5%. Cause 5%, losing. I mean, 5% losing is that's a gut shot straight draw, man. That shit happens. <laughs> people oh, probably man. do a lot of, people do a lot of shit for, for uh, a gut shot straight draw. They probably wouldn't do it with a flush draw though. They'll do it with a flush draw, like, like a 35 percenter. Can you, you know, explain? It, uh, can you explain gut shot straight draw? Is it oh, the five percent? Uh, yeah, Is it specifically five percent. Yeah, it's like it's like four four. Uh, fuck, actually, it's gonna be embarrassing. But I don't know these numbers, but I think it's about four percent with one card to go, or maybe it's eight mm. percent. But it's like in that four to eight percent. It's like five percent. It depends on how many cards you have left. Yeah, it would be like if yo Steven, if I draw one card, and uh, out of the deck, and it's an ace, you lose. If it's if it's any other card, you win. Yeah. yeah so I mean. It's it's four so, four out of fifty two, so eight percent. So we had a podcast uh, a couple back, I think sub ten. I think it was called Uncomfortable Laughs, <laughs> and I'm just so happy right now that we have come back to Uncomfortable Laughs, which is the dark humor territory of this pod, which I think is one of a part. It was part of my vision, whether or not we, you know, we always talked about like sitting down and formally doing like a vision exercise around this. <laughs> Absent that, it was always in my head that like uncomfortable last was a big part of what we wanted to have. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> there's gonna be a future podcast where me and you are doing a crate <laughs> challenge <laughs> yeah. so people do this for free <laughs> yeah i um you know it's funny we only have like seven subscribers at this point so if someone unsubscribes i'll probably know exactly who that person is <laughs> i'll be like mimi did you unsubscribe from my podcast <laughs> we oh my yeah we should we should um we should make it a thing where we celebrate every new subscriber live on the pod and shame every unsubscriber live on the pod up until we get to i don't know like like, like 10 above 10 <laughs> yeah above 10 I, until I we break at, 10 i think like, we're at six or seven right now six or seven so, yeah so yeah so we just got like three or four yeah three four more to go so but yeah no one listens to these so it's cool yeah <laughs> One of the ones has like 22 views or something like that on it. I oh, which one was that? I don't know. I'll check after this. Yeah, this is a fun one. <laughs> I I never keep up with uh, mainstream media like in real time. So a lot of times, like it'll be like a year later, be like, yo, you never watched Squid Games? You should totally watch and, and, and I might or might not go watch it. Um, but it's pretty rare that like the shit's going down when like you know everyone's like watching it right now and and i've I've made it through and actually like ended up watching it but uh it's actually pretty fun to like be able to have these conversations not just with yourself but like with friends and stuff like that um yeah same and that's part of why i was excited about this because i often miss out as well um and the fact that we were even a little bit late on the initial wave uh, mm-hmm. But the inertia, like the gravity, was well was too strong, and we just kind of finished at the same time. Can you? But and also, there's been a lot of commentary about how, um, like, there was such something f- so special about the week over week releases that TV used to do, like serial, mm-hmm. um, because you could have more of this. Like, can you imagine if Squid Games came out week by week? Like, yeah. I mean, I think Squid Games. There's. You can make an argument for some shows that they were stronger because you could binge it. Um, but I think Squid Games is probably strong enough that, like, even if if they did week or week, and if some people caught on to the first, episode, like, two episodes and made the buzz, the week over week probably could have made it really big. Netflix should yeah. probably... Because the, the way Netflix works is, like, you just release it all at once, and that's part of the thing. But I, want, yeah. I, I actually would have liked them to have released it week by week. Because it's, it's kind of like you start to like like characters and stuff and like the memes stay longer. You know, imagine yeah. if there's like Team Ali and like Team, uh, I don't know the girl's name, and then Team like, you know, who the fuck would be on Song Woo's team? Uh, although there, there could be a Team Song Woo, but that shit will go like, <laughs> it would drop off a cliff after a certain week, you know? Um, you, can, you can do so much more around that. And, and the conversation's longer, the conversation gets deeper. And then, uh, and I also think like throughout the course of the show, you make certain um, assertions that get disproven later in the show too. You know what I mean? You might be like, oh yeah, like Song Wu is just like super fucking practical. So, you know, obviously the way he's playing the game is like fine or whatever, right? Um, you know, you might say that episode three and then he fucking mercs Ali. And then, and then he like literally like mercs the girl at the end. And, and then all of a sudden, like you, th- this assertion you make, like taken to the extreme now you have to like kind of either pull that back or now you have this catch 22 where you're like there's a cognitive dissonance where you have to readjust so i mean i I think week by week would have been honestly much better for the show yeah yeah i think so too it'd be interesting if another show can come out with the same magnitude as uh i mean game of thrones was was powerful for that same reason too um, you know, you ruin for characters, and it was week by week, and they had viewing parties, like people would dress up and theme and have Game of Thrones food. So, yeah, they fucked it up. They fucked it up, man. They fucked that one up. The squid Game, yeah. Fucking Koreans, yeah, <laughs> yeah, fucking Koreans. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I think dissonance is, and that, that I think, I think back to the uncomfortable laughs is why I like, I love thought experiments for that way because. They create that dissonance, and the only thing you could do is laugh it away to release the the like you know the conflict that you have. And so like, yeah, if 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 I was like Team Songwoo, and then he mercs uh, 
uh, Ali and everyone in the room looks at me and say, yo, what are the, how many of boy? I would just start laughing. I'd be like, uh, <laughs> guess I was wrong. Oh or I guess I should have yeah pulled a different pick. We didn't even talk about the um, Gihan doing his fucking uh, shit with the old dude. Yeah. Like, yeah. when he was, like, just, like, stealing marbles from this dementia dude. You know what I mean? Like, and I guess you can make the argument, well, the old dude's going to die. Like, I mean, he's, like, already lost his damn marbles, you know, on a figurative sense. So, obviously, like, the it should go to Gihan. But, I mean, they put him in that predicament, too. And, you know, down to one marble. I mean, what? That was so well done. I love that. That was so well done. That I think that might have been the peak of the show for me. That that episode, the Marvel game. Mm-hmm. Because there 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 were there were multiple. I mean, the show entirely had ethical dilemmas like through and through, but there were multiple ethical d- dilemmas happening at the same time where they like. It'll be it'll be like in Game of Thrones, you know how they kill off one character, like you know, four episodes into the season, you're like, oh shit, I can't believe they killed that character. Like they 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 had like four of those happening at the fucking same time. And then each single and it was like in 10 minutes, one of these fucking people are gonna die. One of these people that you like, you know, cared about uh, you know, very deeply. And and yeah, it was just super <laughs> that that was super well done. I think it's one of the best episodes in like tv um Mm -hmm. honestly you know the whole the pacing the build up the whole like you get to pick one person who's your one person gonna be and then they go to this setting that's like a a warm like countryside korean neighborhood feel and there's an aerial view where you can see every like pockets of everyone like you can see everyone there's just like little line of sight breaks with alleys and stuff and i don't know it was so good such a good scene man (laughs) yeah yeah, that was a really nice uh, like peak of the show or climax. I feel like that might have that might have been the climax, perhaps. Like, cause after that, like half the half the fucking characters you gave a shit about died. Yeah. But yeah, that that was a that was exceptionally done. I think that episode is yeah probably one of the best episodes. Um, just in general, I wonder if O's gotten past that episode yet. Probably. <laughs> I would like to watch people while they watch that episode. That's how good that. That, yeah, uh, that episode is. Would it would be really cool if like Netflix had like a social media view where you could see some. You could see the, like oh let's check and you see oh is on episode five. Like you could see like the like a little tracker view. You know of like oh shit. I probably have his Netflix account. I'll probably log in and see what episode yeah. is on because you know how it like it tags <laughs> in whatever the last episode is. Yeah. Oh, oh yo, can you, I you know that'd be fun too. Yeah, I'm giving Netflix free ideas here, but like you know, right click, notify me when oh what like reaches episode six. I think that you know? would increase the likelihood of spoilers, <laughs> like a motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I yeah. think we are at an hour and a half, uh, which just flew by. Yeah, I think this might be our longest one on Squid Game and human nature and uncomfortable laughs i don't think anyone's gonna make it far enough uh i, I feel like towards the end we we're, were talking about some like pretty like oh shit should i edit this out type stuff but i don't think anyone's gonna make it that far so we're probably okay yeah well, hey man by the way right like our one dedicated we, the, uh, sub sub 10 subscribers we're gonna really you know be high touch with our audience i think and shout out to min for for uh <laughs> for like slugging through slogging through this what if, what if she just like um unsubscribes like <laughs> like at some point in this episode <laughs> she doesn't even make it to the shout out um i hope she doesn't feel obligated to watch these episodes because she's watched every single one yeah like she's literally watched every single one and i'm like hey you don't have to watch it and she's literally a, like a fucking trooper because this is definitely a marathon not a sprint so <laughs> yeah well i think we need to have Maybe entertain the idea of having a men's take segment of like. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm down with that. If uh, <laughs> if she wants to, um, if she wants to to join us for for one of these episodes and just yeah, tell us what's gonna get us canceled or not. Yeah, or it could even just be like a, a, a like a message a, a message that we fl- we can float on the screen of like you know men's take like. <laughs> 
Yeah, shout out to Min. Uh, more more show ideas, please. All right, let's wrap this one up and then um and then do our do our little retro. Yeah. I'm glad my internet like finally like solidified. Yeah.